Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And this time I want to talk to you about one of the most controversial things that has come up in Python since I started using it back in the early 90s. And that is the assignment expression operator, otherwise known as the walrus or the walrus operator. So what I want to do is show you when, how, why we would use this, how it changes our code or can change our code, and then evaluate, is this good, is this bad, and maybe talk a little bit about the controversy that came up in its wake. So let's say I am a friendly guy and I want to write a friendly kind of program that will ask people to enter their name. And when they, and as soon as they enter their name, then it says hello and their name. And then uh, when they enter an empty string, we exit from that loop. So I can do something like this. I can say while true, because I can say name equals input, enter your name. I'm going to do a dot strip on that so we remove any white space from the outside. And then I can say if not name, break. And we'll get back to that in just a moment. And I can say your print, hello, name. So what's going on here? Well, while true, this actually gives people the willies a little bit because, wait, it's an infinite loop. Yes, it's an infinite loop. The while loop will run as many times as necessary forever because while is sort of like if it looks to its right, it says, is this true here? And yeah, true is always equal to true, obviously. And so it runs the loop again and again and again. But inside the loop body, we have this if statement, if not name. Now, name is always going to be a string, and that's because the input function always returns a string. And then we're running a method on it, the strip method, which also returns a string. And so a string is going to be assigned to name. And what we're doing here is saying if not name, meaning if name is the empty string, then, and what are we going to do? Then, you know, exit from the loop. That is our uh, sort of safety. That is our escape hatch. That if someone enters an empty string, meaning zero characters in the string, meaning if they type nothing, and press enter, or if they type just a bunch of spaces and press enter, that's going to be removed by strip. And so then we're going to exit from the loop. And this depends on the fact that in Python, objects have a value, a special value in a Boolean context, meaning if it's next to a while, it's next to an if, in a whole bunch of places, basically Python says to the object, hey object, what are you in a Boolean context? Are you true or are you false? And it does not mean that a string is true or false. It means that in this particular context, we're going to treat it as true or false. Okay, so if it's not an empty string, then we're going to say hello. And we'll, so I can say here, hello, Ruben. Hello world, hello there. And then if I press enter, that's the end of it. That's right. Only in programming do we press enter to exit from a loop. It makes total logical sense. Now, people who come from a background and say C, look at this code and they say, wait, 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 wait. This is kind of weird. Because what I'm doing is I'm getting the name from the user and then I'm saying if the name is true or false. How about I do this? How about I get rid of the true and I say while name equals input blah 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 strip. Look at that, my code is so much nicer and smaller and easier to understand now. Now, is it really easy to understand? We'll talk about that in just a moment. So what's going on here? Well, I'm gonna get the input, I'm gonna strip it, I'm gonna assign it to name, and then that value we get back from that assignment will be handed to while. And if it is an empty string, then we'll exit from the loop. And if it's not an empty string, then we print its name out. This is a fantastic idea with one small problem, which is it does not work. It does not work because Python distinguishes between two types of things. It has statements and it has expressions. A statement is something that does something in Python, but it doesn't return a value back, whereas an expression returns a value back. Now, it's pretty rare, actually, to have statements versus expressions in Python. Most things in Python are expressions, but there are definitely places where we have statements. And assignment is one such statement. It does not return a value. And it's a little surprising to people because if you say here x equals y equals 10, it turns out that x is 10 and y is 10. So people sort of think, oh, that's because y equals 10 is evaluated first. It returns the value 10, then that's assigned to x. No, 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 this is just a special case that's put into the language. In most cases, in all cases, except for this one, assignment does not return any value. Meaning here, the Y looks to its right and says, wait, 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 there's no value being given back to me. What are you talking about? Now, for years, I and many other people in the Python world said, as we like to say, this is not a bug, this is a feature, this is a good thing. You might think it's such a great idea to cut down on the size of your while loop. 
But I know that people will make the mistake of saying equal and equal equal, and they're going to put it in the wrong place, and that's just going to be a mess. And let's get out of that potential problem, which has existed in the world of C for many, many, many years. And let's just assume that people are okay with writing a little bit more code. Then Python 3.8 came out. And even when it was in the sort of cooking stages, there was a PEP. A PEP is a Python enhancement proposal. I forget exactly which number it was, but added the uh, assignment expression operator, also known as colon equals, also known as the walrus. And if you're not sure why it would be called the walrus, then tilt your head 90 degrees to the left, and you'll see two eyes and tusks. And if you don't see that, um, don't blame me. I did not make up this name. If you do see that, then I did make up the name. No, I still didn't make up the name, but at least you can't blame me for it. In any event, as, as you can probably imagine now, assignment expression means that it is going to assign, but it's also an expression that returns a value. And so I can say while name, colon equals input. And guess what? It works exactly the same as before. Ruben, we're world, we're out there. I press enter and we're done. So this does indeed shorten our code. And people went bananas over this. People saw this and a whole lot of Python developers said, we hate this. We really hate this. By the way, in the wake of their hate, and it was really like, I've never seen anything like this in the Python world. Um, uh, Guido Van Rossum, who invented Python and was until that point, what's called the BDFL, the Benevolent Dictator for Life, resigned from that position. And he said, you guys, you figure it out. And actually, actually, I think it's been healthy for the Python community to realize that we need to have a structure that's not just based around one person, amazing as, as the person might be, but we now have a much more sort of open, democratic, committee-based, you might call it bureaucratic, but committee-based uh, decision-making process for deciding what goes into Python. Um, I remember the morning that this decision, you know, that, that uh, Guido resigned, I remember uh, getting email from my editor at Linux Journal saying, hey, can you write a quick article about this? And I was sure it was an April Fool's joke. I think it was in April. And yet it was not. Okay. So now we've shortened our code. The thing is, one of the objections that people had was now people are going to mix this up all the time, right? They're going to say now like X colon equals five. And that's just going to be disastrous because when do you use the regular assignment? When do you use the uh, walrus? And the solution was that anywhere you can use regular assignment, you cannot use the walrus. Watch this. We're going to get an error here. X colon equals five. You can't do it. So only in places where Python is expecting to get an expression, expecting to get a value, then and only then can you use the walrus operator. And if you're just using regular old assignment, you cannot use. And that definitely cuts down on many of the objections that I had to this operator. I think it was a very clever thing. Also reduces the chance that people will get mixed up. Now, it does mean that you can then play some games and some of the potential for doing stuff with the walrus operator, um, I think, leads to less readable code. This is a little confusing on the right here, I will admit, especially for beginners to Python, but you can sort of get used to it. But let me show you one other thing that we can do. So if I want to create, you know, I can create, create a dictionary with a dict comprehension. So I'm going to say here something like this. I'm going to say p colon, well, let's just say, yeah, p colon value, I don't know, for, let's do this, well, yeah, let's say here, let's do this, p value in uh, enumerate, what we'll say here, like value, p enumerate of a, b, c, d. So this is creating a dictionary, because dict comprehensions create dictionaries, and here what I'm doing is I'm using enumerate to run over the string a, b, c, d. I get value and key, so it's going to be the index 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to get the values in the string here, a, b, c, d. I'm going to stick them into key and value here, and we're going to create a dictionary. So far, so good. Okay, but what if I want to do that with something a little more interesting? What if I want to do that with Etsy password, right? So as you might know, let's just do a head here of Etsy password. Let's do a little more than that. Etsy password is where on Unix systems, at least, we store the usernames and passwords. Actually, we don't store passwords there anymore. And so if I want to create a dictionary from usernames and user IDs, how can I do that? Well, I can say here, I can say the first line is going to be my expression. We'll do that in a moment. For one line in open, and we'll say here Etsy password. And I'm even going to say here, uh, if not one line starts with the hash mark. And that's just like to get rid of that. And then what am I going to do? Well, for the key, I'm going to want the username. So I'm going to say one line split on colon zero, colon one line split on colon, say two. Have I successfully created a dictionary here? I have. 
And so my dictionary is based on the file Etsy password. We're ignoring the comment lines. And on each line that, that is not a comment, I'm going to split it apart. And I'm going to grab index zero for my uh, key for my username and index two for my user ID. And you might look at this and say, wait, 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 that's so ridiculous. I'm running split twice. Surely there must be a better way to do that. The problem is that the way that dict comprehensions work, you need to have some value here before and some value here after. You've got that call in the middle and you can't get around it. But, 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 what I can do is I can have an additional if statement in my uh, comprehension here. And I can say if fields colon equal one line split on colon. Okay, this is getting weird, right? What's going on? Well, first of all, in a comprehension, I can actually have more than one if statement. Not very well known, but true. Secondly, what am I doing here? I'm saying if, and it's going to say, do I have an empty list? If it's an empty list, we're going to ignore it. But if it's not an empty list, then we are actually going to run the expression at the top here and get a key value pair for our dictionary. Fantastic. So I can now do this. And then I can say here, fields zero. And I can say here, fields two. See, I've managed to cut down on my calls to one line split. I'm only going to call it once. And because we can only have an expression here, but because the walrus is an expression, we can sort of have the best of both worlds. That is to say, I can both have assignment and have the expression. And I run this and you know what happens? Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> Why does it not work? Because of uh, the order of operations and so forth. I actually need to put all this inside of parentheses. And then it works just fine. Because what's going on? Let's just walk through this one last time here. So we're going to iterate over Etsy password one line at a time. We're going to get rid of the lines that start with hash marks. Those are comment lines. And then on the remaining lines, we're going to take one line, split it across colon, giving us back a list of strings. We are then going to assign that list of strings to fields using the walrus because it's an assignment. But it's also the walrus. It's an expression, so it's going to return a value. And so long as it's not an empty list, the if says, OK, go ahead. It then pops up to the top row here, and we get field 0, fields 2, and we create our dictionary. So this is like a sophisticated use of the walrus operator. You could argue it's too clever by half because maybe it'll get confusing for people. But and here's an important one, job security. All right, don't do that. Don't write bad code just for job security, but it's a consideration. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you want to get lots of Python tips sent directly to your inbox, sign up for my Better Developers newsletter. You can also contact me on Twitter, contact me via email, and don't forget my book, Python Workout with 50 exercises to improve your Python fluency. I'll be back soon with another video. Thanks for watching.